again, the sermon title is Being United. How good it is when God's people are united. Isn't that right? When we're all together in love, it's so much better than when there's friction and conflict. I think we've all been experiencing that at some point in our lives where we know what it's like to be kind of all on the same page and going the same direction. And then we know what it's like to just feel like everything is just being torn at the seams. It's tough to survive that type of a situation, isn't it? Where there's discord. And I believe the message today is that of finding our unity in Christ. Short of that, it's going to be very hard to have unity. This does not mean that we agree on every little thing. It does not mean that we're constantly in the same lockstep, going the same direction with every single issue. What it does mean is that we have decided that it's worth it to buy into this idea that we want to be unified. We know the benefits of it, that it's so much better to be working together, to show that love for each other. And I'll tell you what, one of the main ways that we do that, honestly, is when we decide we're not going to have to have our own way on every little thing. Amen. When we put other people in front of ourselves, when we decide we're going to listen instead of talk, we're going to let somebody else have their way instead of me demanding my way. It is a conscious choice, friends, that we have to make. It's not easy to do because our human nature is that we want to rise up and we can just feel the hairs on the back of our neck stand up and bristle when somebody does something maybe we don't necessarily like. So we have to be aware of this idea that we have to know where we stand on it and we have to have a plan. And that plan is that we're going to obey Christ. We're going to submit to Christ. And then as we do that, we're going to find it much easier to submit to people who maybe we don't see eye to eye on or agree on completely. You go, well, it's almost impossible it, to agree on everything. And I would say you're probably right. We're probably not all going to agree on everything. We all have different backgrounds. We all have different perspectives. But we can find unity in the midst of that diversity. We can find that we're all heading in the same direction. We may be on different points along the same path, but as long as we're going in the same direction. I think God's got each of us in a unique place. He wants us to serve Him wherever we're at. And remember this, that we are all works in progress. Nobody has arrived. We're all just sort of going in this relationship with God so that maybe we are growing a little bit closer to Christ every day. That would be my prayer. I hope that's your prayer where every day we're a little bit more like Jesus. Are there still rough edges? Oh yeah. If you don't believe it, just hang around me for a little while, you'll see a lot of rough edges. But in the midst of that, I pray that God is still leading me into being closer to Him, and that if I say something I shouldn't have said, that I go and ask to be forgiven by that person, and that I try not to do that again. So much of it is how we respond to people, isn't it? It's, it's the your words we use. We can either build up or we can tear down with our words. It's all so critical to what uh, goes into making us a unified church. And that's really what Paul is talking about in this section of 1 Corinthians. The people in the church had become divided and they had lost their focus on Christ. So let's look at what Paul does here. You know, he could have just said, well, I'm going to ignore it. I'm over here in a different city now. I'm not going to mess with these folks over in Corinth. It's just, you know, I, that's their problem. It's not my problem. And yet he steps in and tries to encourage them to correct what was going on gently, but still very authoritatively. And so Paul's not just kicking the can down the road. He does address the problem. And in the middle of addressing the problem, he gives us solutions on how we can overcome discord and a lack of unity. So let's look at these. First of all, Paul says that the church should be in agreement with each other. Number one, agreement. Second, there should be no divisions among you. And then third, we should all have the same mind and the same purpose. We can do that. It's a challenge, but we can do that. Again, it doesn't mean we're going to agree on everything. We don't have to agree on everything. And Paul doesn't say that we have to necessarily walk in the same exact pattern of each other. But what we do want to do is to be unified in our direction and that we are following after Christ. 
and then we're not building up walls between us. So let's look at these in order. First of all, one of the great things we have as followers of Christ that we can build on is that we should all be in agreement on those basic foundational fundamental principles of our faith. Jesus Christ, God's only Son, came into the world so that He could live a perfect life. He could show us who God is in human form. Then He could go to the cross of Calvary and die for our sins and that His shed blood is what forgives us of our sins. He rises from the dead. He defeats death, the devil, and sin once and for all. He rises and he ascends into heaven 40 days later and He's coming back. Those are basic principles that we should all be able to agree on. That's just foundational, fundamental truth that we see in our faith. We realize that it's all a free gift. We don't work for it. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. And yet it's given to us freely by Christ. Now what do we do with that? Do we hold on to it? No, we share it with others. We, we pass it along in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, in our actions to our family members, our friends, our co-workers, our neighbors. As God gives us the opportunity, we just start sharing that with other people. And we begin to see God working in our lives. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. We put our roots down farther and farther into our faith, though, and suddenly we realize we don't have to have our own way. And that's part of the spiritual maturity. We begin to just say, you know what, it's not all about me. It's not about me having my own way. It's about me letting other people be first. Philippians 2, 3, and 4 puts it like this. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others as more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. I like that. In other words, put other people first and put yourself second. That's a challenge for all of us. Jesus said, I came to be a servant, not to be served. That's our example. Is what Christ did for us. He never told us to do anything that he wasn't willing to do himself, that he didn't show us the way. So one of the easiest ways to start finding unity in the church is for us as individuals to become more like Christ. That's really going to be the first step. The second thing that Paul says is that the church in Corinth should not let there be any divisions. This is something that it's so prevalent in our society today here in America, probably around the world, all kinds of divisions, aren't there? It almost seems like some people get energized by categorizing people. We're going to put you in this box based on whether you're a liberal, whether you're a conservative, whether you're somewhere in the middle. We're going to, we're going to put you in a little box. We're going to put you in a box based on your race. If you're a white person here, if you're a black person here, a brown person here, whatever color you are, we're going to just put everybody in these boxes. And despite an increased awareness of the sin of racism, we've got more concerns now than we ever have with this sin in our society. Things seem to be just almost unraveling because we've tried to do it our way, not God's way. We have economic divisions, don't we? The well-to-do, the wealthy, they have very little to do with the poor unless it's to maybe give them a box of food at Harvesters and, okay, I did my good deed, I'll see them again next month, you know. Uh, I'm not going to deal with them again. And it, we, we put people in these boxes based on how little money they have or what kind of car they drive, what neighborhood they live in, what kind of education they had, maybe even what they believe in. We, we put all these little walls up and sometimes I don't think we even realize it. And then sadly, there are divisions in the church as well. As we Christians sometimes have let our own interpretations of the scriptures cloud our unity and keep us apart. Walls have gone up in inside of churches. We've seen denominations split. We've seen churches split because people just couldn't learn to just put some of these problems and, and deal with uh, the challenges of disagreements aside. And something that's real small could end up blowing up. Maybe it's things like the way we worship that divides us. Maybe it's the music that we use in the services. Maybe it's even the color of the carpet in the sanctuary. You hear all these little stories and you just almost can't believe them. The first step in healing this problem, I really believe, is that we look in the mirror at ourselves and we quit trying to find out what other people are doing this really irritating us, realizing 
I have to be the one that takes that first step. I have to be the one that puts my desires to the back and let somebody else go forward. At that point, we're going to be able to have some reconciliation with each other and, and with the Lord. But, you know, as long as our human pride is in the way, it's going to be really hard to really allow other people to take first place and put ourselves at the back. Again, we just have that tendency as humans, we want it to be our way. We want to be in control. And we're all that way, I think, to some degree. And until we take that step back and put Christ first, it's not going to change. It's just not going to change. We can't change that ourselves. I think that's what Paul's getting at when he said the foolishness of the cross. See, the world's wisdom is the stronger the better. I will beat you, and I will be in charge. And therefore, that's the way the world works. That's the way of the world, is for me to be in charge and for you not to be in charge. And if we all have that attitude, you can see where everything just sort of splinters apart and fractures and fragments. Rather than doing what the Bible tells us to do, and that is to count other people as more important than ourselves. In Romans 12, 18, Paul says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Find ways to live at peace with people. You can sit there and have an argument with somebody, and you won the argument, but you just lost that person for life. They're never going to deal with you again because of the way you treated them and the way you were harsh with them. A friend of mine years ago, Harry Botts, he used this term, don't bruise the fruit. I, I thought, what's he talking about? I, don't, I mean, I, I'm not one that goes up to Dillon's and throws the peaches on the floor to bruise them, you know? You know, what, what's he talking about? He was talking about, be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you deal with people. And be careful how you share with them. Be careful how you come down on them. Because when you do that in such a way that it's going to hurt them, now you bruise them. You've done more harm than good. I had a couple of situations in my own family the last few weeks where I was going to say something to someone. And it was something that I was going to say in a nice way. I really believe it. It was just, hey, you know, kind of conversational. I, thought, I think I need to tell to this person about this. I didn't say anything. And you know what happened? It came around perfectly. The thing I was going to talk about, it came around without me saying a word. God just took care of it. About two weeks later, same situation. I think I need to say something. Same situation came right around. The person took care of it. Not that it was, that was my great idea, but it was exactly what I was going to say. Hey, you might want to keep this in mind, you know, or here's a thought for you. you know, that's how I was going to announce it and, and present it. God took care of both of those. Sometimes we just have to be careful as how we uh, talk to people and what we say to them. We don't have to try to just impose our will on people. So be open to other people. Be listening to people instead of talking all the time. Again, one of my problems is I like to talk. We're not always going to agree on everything, but we can at least agree that we're going to love each other. Amen? Amen. Even in the midst of disagreements. Third thing Paul calls on Christians is to be of the same mind and the same purpose. And I think this is a real critical part of being a follower of Christ, that we are all going to be pulling in the same direction. It's something that we have to do through one way and one way only, and that is that we submit to Christ. If we're looking at each other, trying to get our cues from them about which way we're going to go, it ain't going to work. We have to get our marching orders from Christ. Amen? If we're getting our marching orders from Christ, I think we're all going to be going in the same direction. I really do. There was a book by A.W. Tozer, who was a well-known pastor and author. In the 1960s, he wrote a book called The Pursuit of God. And he wrote this in the book. Has it ever occurred to you that 100 pianos, all tuned to the same fork, are automatically tuned to each other? They are of one accord by being tuned not to each other, but to another standard to which each one must individually bow. So 100 worshipers meeting together, each one looking away to Christ, are in heart nearer to each other than they could possibly be were they to become unity conscious and turn their eyes away from God to strive for closer fellowship. If God's not front and center, if it's not about following Christ, everything we do is just going to be an effort of futility. But if we put our eyes on Christ, He's going to get us into that place where a lot of the differences are going to be minimized and we are going to be able to start walking together following Christ. You know, it's interesting when you do that, when we submit to Christ, 
we find that we are more willing to just be around lots of other people who may not agree with us. They don't have to just be Christian people that we're talking about. They can be people who may don't even have a faith at all. But we find that we're much more tolerant of them. We're, we're, we're more conversational with them. And we develop those relationships with them. And I think that's part of submitting to God and listening to what He wants us to do. It's all about that relationship we have with Christ. And He wants us to take that same relationship and give it to other people as well. So as we meet at the foot of the cross today as Christians, we find our agreement starts and ends right there. That's where we can all find some unity is that we're all there together seeking the Lord's forgiveness, seeking His grace and His mercy and His love. That's one thing that really does unify us. The second thing, again, is when we dismantle the walls of division that we have put up, either knowingly or unknowingly, we're going to find that a lot of those differences get minimized. And then the third thing, again, we are united with the same mind and the same purpose. And we decide that it is worth it to submit ourselves yeah. to Christ and to each other as we serve the Lord in our world. Amen. Lord, thank you again for this message from Paul. Lord, that, that we have a, a, a lot of unity. I'm so thankful this church has so much unity. And Lord, I, I pray for the larger church, uh, the church of Jesus Christ around the world. There are divisions, maybe within denominations or, or even with different denominations. Lord, help us to not point our fingers at others, knowing that four of our fingers are pointing back at us whenever we do. But Lord, just help us to to take care of what we can do individually. And Lord, if we all do that, the church itself, the congregation, is going to be more unified as we all pull together and seek you. And then, Lord, just help us to share that love and that spirit of unity with our world. Lord, that they will know that we are your followers by how we love them. Lord, we ask your blessing now on the rest of this service. We pray this in Jesus' name.